I am the Nature Hacker and this is your world. So today I want to talk about um, basically the holy grail for T3 mineralization. But before I jump into that, I just want to give you a quick update on my hair protocol and stuff. I mean, recently I don't have um, the perfect essential oils for this, but what I've been doing is just putting some frankincense essential oil just straight on my head and just rubbing it around before I go to sleep every night and then washing it off in the morning. Um, and I've noticed it's just frankincense oil, so it's not the greatest killer of H. pylori. I'm waiting on some carrot seed oil. I'm waiting on some oregano oil. I'm waiting on some lemongrass oil. Those are all much better oils for H. pylori, so those I will transition to those. But right now I'm just using frankincense because I have it. And um, I think it's doing a little teeny bit. I think I notice a little bit of regrowth like the slightest teeny weeny bit amount of regrowth like I, I saw some teeny weeny thin little hairs and i don't think i had those before just a few of them is all i really saw so i feel like it is working hopefully <laughs> so i'll keep you updated there's no way you're gonna be able to tell the difference uh yeah but when i looked super close it was kind of like yeah, I can see a little teeny bit. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about the Holy Grail. I made this powder from scratch. This is 35 grams of tetracalcium phosphate. Look at this. You just, you can't imagine how valuable this stuff is. I, I went on Ali, Alibaba. It's the cheapest place you can get bulk. Uh, chemicals and stuff like that and they wanted for 10 grams this is 35 grams for 10 grams they wanted 150 bucks 150 bucks so this would run several hundred dollars right here and i made it in three hours for like five bucks worth of materials so all it is is um I believe it's one mole. I mean, what, check in the description. I'll have a link and I'll, dis I'll describe the chemistry exactly and uh, how many moles of each. But I believe it was one mole of calcium hydroxide, one mole of tricalcium phosphate. And um, it, that could be a little off. It could be two of one or something. I can't remember. But just check the link in the description below. I'll have that. I'll put it right at the top in, in that link so you can see. But anyway, I mix those two powders together and then I place them in this. This is called a combustion capsule. It's made by Coors Tech and this is Coors Tech 60051 combustion capsule. It's 17 milliliters 60051. The bigger the better. Get something bigger than this because this making um Making it in this little thing takes a long time. Um, but yeah, so I use this. I put the powder in here. Okay. Uh, I have, I'm using an oxyacetylene torch. All right. And um, yeah, the oxyacetylene torch is turned to an oxidizing flame. If you just Google oxyacetylene oxidizing flame, it will teach you how to tune the flame to make it oxidizing. So you're going to want to do that. The reason you want this little guy or any combustion capsule is because you're heating this thing up to over half the temperature of the surface of the sun. The surface of the sun is about 5,600 Celsius. You're heating this sucker up to 3,000 Celsius. 3,000. That's like 6,000 Fahrenheit. Okay. <laughs> We're talking like cosmic temperatures all right so um what will happen is when you do that the mixture of calcium hydroxide and tricalcium phosphate will start to melt okay you have to heat it up ultra hot like you have to be holding that 3000 degree flame on the powder for a long time for it to start to melt then it'll start to melt and you'll notice pieces 
conglomerating together and melting basically and then they re-solidify when you turn off the heat and that's what you're looking for you're looking for those pieces that melted so just keep flaming it stirring it with a, a ceramic spoon i don't have one around here to show you but stir it with a ceramic spoon you can find ceramic spoons on like ebay and um just keep doing that until it all basically turns into that gritty um chunky uh melted stuff okay then you are going to want a giant mortar and pestle see if I can see what number this is. This is Coors USA 17. It's an industrial mortar and pestle. This, the, the, mor the mortar itself, the bowl thing was number 17. And this thing is... Oh, gosh. Let's see if I can read this. Five two zero one eight. Five That is the pestle. So you're gonna want to use that. You put all of the the chunks of the melted. What that becomes when you when you're reacting calcium hydroxide with tricalcium phosphate, you're getting there's three calciums on one. There's one calcium on the other. They're combining to form a molecule of four calciums. Okay, so that's called tetracalcium phosphate. It's also known as TTCP, all right? And this is the stuff they use to make, um, replace, you know, to make bone grafts, things like that, like in the body. This is the cement. It's a, one of the ingredients in the cement that they use to actually make pieces of bone for the human body, okay? So you're going to want to grind that powder, that thing up into a fine powder using... Uh, your handy industrial ceramic mortar and pestle and you end up with this stuff right here which is way very very valuable so valuable so it's worth investing in doing this and the when you're using an, a, the, an oxidizing flame on an oxyacetylene torch you're not going to introduce any contaminants you're not going to get any acetylene or whatever in it um, basically what's happening is Having the flame oxidizing means you're converting all of the acetylene gas into carbon dioxide. So you're fully burning it. That's what an oxidizing flame does. Um, if you want to go even more natural or kind of off the grid type uh, production, what you can do is um, get a hydro uh, oxyhydrogen uh, setup. If you get an oxyhydrogen setup, which just uses hydrogen and oxygen, then um, th that just produces water and CO2. I don't even know if it produces CO2. No, it doesn't even produce CO2. That just produces water, <laughs> uh, which may or may not be good for what we're doing. We don't really want to get this stuff wet. Uh, so, yeah, maybe oxyacetylene is the best for now. I don't know. But anyway, you get this powder, and this powder is quite possibly the holy grail see the deal is now with that powder that's tetracalcium phosphate as water and you know as atmospheric humidity reacts with that over time that will actually turn into hydroxyapatite itself probably over the course of years you know if you're in a very humid place and you leave this out this bag unzipped for years um, this will turn into hydroxyapatite or you can mix this stuff with dicalcium phosphate, all right, dicalcium phosphate, and you add a little bit of water, mix it together, that will form hydroxyapatite quite rapidly. Now, what I was using in my teeth, teeth powder before was calcium hydroxide and tricalcium phosphate. Now, that's, you know, calcium hydroxide, tricalcium phosphate, they bind together to make um, hydroxyapatite. Um, very, very uh, slowly. And I think actually it was two calcium hydroxides and then a tetracalcium phosphate, and that adds up to uh, six, six calciums uh, to make the hydroxyapatite. But that happens so slowly that literally it would take 
weeks or months for that reaction to happen. So yes, I was putting those ingredients on the teeth in my last teeth powder, but the it was just so such a slow uh, process that um, it just it wasn't practical. It just wasn't a practical process uh, for it happening on the teeth and stuff. So yeah, it, it did help. It did add a little bit of uh, hydroxy. My teeth are so smooth right now. Jeez, I'm using this stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, it did work. It did help. It definitely helped people. It was good. But this stuff is a whole nother level because we're going from a process that took weeks or months to a process that now takes minutes to days. Okay, so um, minutes or hours really. So we're just, we're going to be putting a much thicker layer on. We're going to be improving the enamel so much f um, faster for one, but also just better because since it happens faster, you need it to happen fast so it can happen while you're brushing. You know what I mean? It, so it's like an exponential thing. It's like if it's a super slow process, it's going to take a hundred years to get uh, enamel, uh, you know, a significant layer of enamel deposited. But if it's a faster process, it might take one year, it might take months, you know, something like that. So, uh, it's just exponentially better. It's also exponentially more expensive. I mean, like this is tetracalcium phosphate. Calcium hydroxide um, costs for 10 grams of calcium hydroxide, it's like 10 cents, literally. For 10 grams of this stuff, it's like $100. Okay, so it's like a factor of a thousand times more expensive than what I was using before. A thousand times more expensive. And I'm only going to increase my price slightly. I'm going to, for a 70 gram bag, which is like a pretty dang big bag of this stuff, it used to be $9, I'm going to charge $11 for it now. And it's not all of this. This is just a small ingredient in the powder. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting, I'm basically, I'm, uh, I'm putting a lot of the uh, cost myself. But anyway, um, so I'm going to also add in that dicalcium phosphate. So you got tetracalcium phosphate plus dicalcium phosphate. That's six. That will give you the hydroxyapatite. So... Um, yeah, this will form hydroxyapatite much faster. Hopefully, much more of it will basically deposit on the teeth. And the reason we can't just use straight hydroxyapatite is it's not going to stick on the teeth. It's like if you just use hydroxyapatite, it's just neutral. It's just going to just go around doing nothing. But when you have these ingredients that react together to create it, it's like they can form the hydroxyapatite on the teeth itself. Okay. So that's why we want these precursors and not the actual hydroxyapatite itself. The actual hydroxyapatite um, is just inert. It's not reactive. So anyway, I just taught you how to make it. Um, for me to make that 35 grams took me a, like probably three hours of hard work just burning this stuff. Um, so it takes a while to heat it up hot enough to melt it. But uh, this is a proven method. I mean, other people, I've read patents and stuff, and this is how it's done. They take shortcuts to make it work at a lower temperature because nobody, let's face it, nobody has a furnace that can heat up to 3,000 Celsius. No one. So what they do is they come up with protocols so that it can work at a lower temperature. So it can work at 1,500C or it can work at 1,200C. But they get a less pure product than I am. And... It's just because they don't, they don't realize, they honestly, they don't realize that they could just use an oxyacetylene torch and just flame the stuff and <laughs> just flame it. Um, they don't realize that. They feel, they, they're scientists in the lab and they don't have, they're not welders. You know, an oxyacetylene torch, the only people that have those are like welders, people who are like car mechanics and stuff. So that's why, um, well, it's my uncle's actually and I'm borrowing it, but that's why I have it. My family's big into cars. Um, my dad's built electric cars. My uncle's builds electric cars. Um, my uncle, sometimes he buys cars, fixes them up and sells them. So my dad 
and I worked on our own cars. I've never brought a car into a, a mechanic shop. I've always fixed any problems on my own. So I'm, I'm really well versed with, you know, cars and I'm a mechanical engineer, etc., etc. So anyway, when you have these various interests and you can combine them, you can innovate so, so much better because no scientist in their right mind would ever have thought of an oxyacetylene torch. The only people who know about oxyacetylene torches are like car mechanics and welders and stuff. So anyway, that is the holy grail for teeth. I mean, literally it's the holy grail. I mean, this is the stuff they use to make bones, you know, uh, replacement bones in the body, you know, bone grafts, any type of, any type of hydroxy appetite in the body that's needed they use this these um these things that that is dicalcium phosphate plus tetracalcium phosphate tetracalcium phosphate is so expensive it's out of reach of almost everybody but i can make it so cheap that i can pass on that savings to you so check out the link in the description i will um give a, a rundown of this in written form and um coming soon i'm gonna make a new batch of my teeth powder using this stuff and it's going to be so much better you'll be able to use really you'll be able to put as much on the toothbrush as you want and it's not going to burn your gums because this stuff is a lot less alkaline than calcium hydroxide in my old uh, recipe so it's less harsh it's more powerful at remineralizing it's the best of every world and i i just want to thank elena um she made a video reviewing my teeth powder i've been uh, talking to her about you know how to improve it and stuff and this idea definitely uh, was fully inspired by her I would never have uh, gone down this path if I wasn't talking to her about it because um, you know she made the video on talking she was talking so much about hydroxy appetite and I'm like well I actually don't have hydroxy appetite in the recipe but you know, and just talk thinking about that and talking to her about it I'm just like you know what I think there might be other chemicals I could use that are even better so I mean because she was getting some pretty pretty dang good results but it wasn't bringing her a hundred percent of the way so that really just encouraged me to make something even better to see if I can bring her teeth all the way and everybody else benefits from that you know me making this change I mean it's really a high quality ingredient so thanks for watching uh, remember to check out the link in the description I am the nature hacker do work.